I was working on a class project at home when I heard over the news about the murders at Ecole Polytechnique. And at that point in the news, they didn't know how many women had been murdered, but they already knew that it was women, that it was women's bodies that were coming out. On the 6th of December, 1989, I was on duty and uh, I was responsible of the communication in the Montreal Urban Community Police Department. And I was called to, to go to the university for shooting. You know? And when I arrived there, the, the newspapers man and the outside of the building, and I told him, just let me go inside and see what's going on and I'll be back with you. And then I went inside and I went all around and I finally find my own daughter now lying down there, just besides the, the guy that had stabbed her. Everybody in Canada knew his name. You know, how horrible that at, at these women's expense, he gets this notoriety, this fame. Everybody knew his name, but what about them? And that was part of the impetus for a permanent marker showing their names. Chris's idea when she first came in with it was really I think in her mind, and probably in ours, that this whole thing could work from concept through to conclusion in two years of hard work. Uh, took seven. What, what happens hand in hand with all of the practicalities of developing a project like this is the philosophizing and discussion. And there was a tremendous amount of discussion, the soul searching in a lot of ways, and, and redefining language and ideas. and. There isn't a lot of money out there that people are ready to hand over to violence against women. So it feels like there's a competition and you start thinking, well, I deserve it more than they deserve it. And it's, it's horrible. There's people dying every day down here. You know, the 14 women in Montreal got massacred and that was horrifying. But look at the names on this list. All these women counted. We don't have Canada-wide coverage of all the women that die right here in the downtown east side. Why is that? Criticism is a huge part of this project and how we've dealt with it, you know. In order for it to be a national monument, you know, you need to create a process that includes the whole country. You know, so we had to bring in uh, women who could help us in that process. We ended up involving the jury in something that was difficult for them too. Like, I didn't know that they would have to continue to defend it to today and beyond today. Finally, we had a site uh, picked out that the park board felt comfortable with us having, and that's when the ship really hit the fan. Then somewhere along the way, after we go from concept to more specifics, we got the inscription. And basically all hell broke loose in the media. Well, one of the major concerns about the Women's Monument Project that was somehow women would take revenge. Given the opportunity, we would have, yes, on rearing horses, women holding up men's heads or something, right? We got a bomb threat, you know, as soon as it started. And the irony, you know, of we're building a monument to remember the women who've been murdered and then to be threatened like that. Marker for Change by Beth Albert is the selected design of the jury. It employs a circular form used by women for centuries to represent a continuum. My thoughts were about the tragedy of the massacre, the loss, the grief. I thought about the pink granite from Quebec and it was going to be a construction grade. It was going to be about um, work. It wasn't going to be about death. Patricia Allen, Elena Alter, Claudette Colette,
This circle is dedicated to peace and the message on this marker, written in the languages of the world, is our way of mourning, marking, and remembering the women in other countries who are being killed also.